Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and with a request from a few subscribers, I've decided to put together this video to demonstrate how my light setup was constructed. been getting a lot of requests about how I constructed my light setup so today I just want to put this video together with how I have my whole light uh, assembled so let's just start off by saying that these two light bars or light rails are made by AI and these are the AI classic light rails and they've been discontinued for a while now so they are hard to find but if you can't find them um, you know these are the two that you would need now I have uh, descriptions down or had left information down in the description below that you can actually take a look at and I may be able to help you source some but uh, they are getting rare and rare out in the market so they are kind of hard to find but if you can then these are the ones that I'm using. Now um, I also uh, had bought some screws and uh, two different sets of nuts and some washers and they are down in the description below. And uh, what I want to do is just give you, you know, some pictures of how I have this whole thing set up and constructed so that it'll give you an idea if you should decide to build your own setup just like this one here. All right, so some of the prep work that needs to be done includes cutting your light rails. So my tank is actually a Red Sea Reefer 625XXL, and it's approximately 59 inches long. And these bars, I believe, are 60 inches. So I had my guy who works on metal and welding, I had him chop these down to 54 inches. And then uh, what I did was I had him drill four holes, two on each light bars at both ends. And uh, they are one inch away from the edge. So I had four holes put in. Um, and these holes were used to mount the Orphic screws onto them so that they could be hung. Uh, the other thing I did was I had him retap the two ends that were cut just so that I can put the original screws back in should I decide to put an in face plate in. So one thing to note here is that I had the light bars cut at 54 inches versus say 60 or 59 or 58 because to me 54 was just that perfect length didn't look too long didn't look too short and then on top of that if i had one inch holes drilled on each end that that made you know the uh, holes about 52 inch apart from each other and when i had uh, measured my ceiling i had studs in those positions so my studs there were you know, a few in between, but the two outer ones were about 52 inches apart. So that just made it easier for me to mount the, uh, uh, the light hangers straight up so that aesthetically it looks, um, I guess it just looks straight instead of having it, um, can, you know, having the hangers a little bit on the outside or inside, making it kind of crooked, so to speak. So that's just something to think about if you're gonna do your light rails, just make sure that Ideally, you want the light rails to hang straight down. So you want to make sure you measure your ceiling. You want to make sure there's a stud there. And then measure, you know, the distance. And hopefully you could get it somewhere around 52 to 56 inches apart if you're doing like a 60-inch or 59-inch tank setup like mine. If you have something shorter like the Red Sea Reefer 425, you may want that a little bit shorter. So you may have to do some calculations on your part to see what will look aesthetically pleasing and, and what would be best for your setup. Okay, so the first thing that I did here was I actually took off all the screws off of the unit. So for the standard Orphic Atlantic, there were, I wanna say two, four, six, eight screws on that unit holding it together. So I took off all eight and then I substitute them for the new ones that I bought. And these new ones were a bit longer because the whole idea is that I'm gonna put this new screw through and then uh, there's gonna be an extra piece that's hanging out and I would be able to put a 
washer and a nut on that, and then that washer and nut would slide into the AI rail. So when I put this long screw in, in order to keep this whole unit tight, I had to put a, a separate nut in. This first nut actually holds the whole unit together, and if you look at the uh, Orphic, the hole is slightly bigger on the black top acrylic piece so that the nut actually sinks right in. So you have to make sure you get that size. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but I did because then the rail could sit semi-flush to the unit and it'll give it a cleaner look. So I did that to all of them. I put in the nuts and I also um, screwed them in just to make sure they were tight. Um, and then uh, I made sure that the nuts were all sunk into the opening of that acrylic. If you are planning to use the light bars, just like how I have it here, um, what I did here was I just assembled the light bars, make sure they had the brackets mounted on, and then I created um, the actual bracket that mounted the Orphic standard bracket or angle bracket to the light, was mounted onto this piece of bracket or aluminum bracket that was pulled off the um, Red Sea Reefer shipping box container. Um, there was an angled bracket, and there's a few of them that's holding the uh, MDF board together. I had just cut that in half and used that and drilled extra holes so that I can use it to mount the Orphic light bars onto the um, AI rails. So uh, you'd have to also prep this and get this ready prior to slipping on the rails onto the um, actual Atlantics. And uh, in doing so, you also have to make sure that the nuts on the Atlantic uh, has a little play in it so that you can slip this uh, bracket onto and then slide over it, if that makes any sense. Um, but <clears throat> if you look at the picture, you can tell that the actual bracket is under or sandwiched between the AI rail and the Orphic Atlantic light. And it's the, at the position where the um, screws are at on the light itself. So the light has eight screws two on the outside and four on the outsides, and then another four sets on the inside, and this is part of the set that's on the inside. One thing to consider before putting the rail on is if you want your antennas mounted. Um, I decided not to put the antennas on just because I felt it looked a bit cleaner, but if you do want the antennas on, you should put them on before you put the rails on because once you have the antennas in place, you really can't put the antennas on. At least for the one that's um, the one where the antenna sits in the middle between both lights, that one's going to be hard to get on. All right, so I mean that's a quick rundown of my light setup, and it may be different for your light setup if you have one, two, three, or or different sets of uh, lights you want to put together. But this setup was just for two lights. Um, if you have one light, I mean it'll be the same process. But if you have three or four lights, then you'll probably have to go with a different option. But I do want to apologize that I didn't record this whole process of building this light last year when I was in the process of building it, but uh, now I'm just doing everything from memory and from what I have in front of me. And uh, I hope that this will at least point you in the right direction, give you about 70-80% of the process that it took for me to get this light built. Uh, but yeah, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave it down in the comment section below. Just let me know what your thoughts are and if you have any improvements that um, you've discovered, feel free to share. I might be able to use that on my setup as well. Again, I just want to thank you for stopping by and just want to thank you for watching this video and hopefully it's inspirational and it'll help you uh, to build your light setup. Again, this is Paul signing out and I'll catch you guys in the next video.